Hello and welcome to this short little video on the nonparametric bootstrap for p-values, uh, for testing hypotheses comparing two population parameters. So again, let's load in the crime data set. Again, let's focus on the GSP per capita. And now let's look at, as an example, let's go ahead and look at the difference in means between the Northeast and the Midwest using confidence intervals. And this is what we ended up with in a prior video. Define our test statistic. Go ahead and break up the GSP per capita into its two groups, the Northeast group and the Midwest group. And then we sample from the, the uh, Northeast group, sample from the Midwest group, calculate the mean, sample means of each, and then the test statistic, which is just the difference in the two do that many, many times. This will give you a 95% confidence interval of the difference. Now the p-value actually makes an assumption. Um, let's go ahead and do this for a p-value for the hypothesis, the null hypothesis, that mu1 is equal to mu2. Now, if mu1 is equal to mu2, that means that we can the, the, the census for region is irrelevant, which means we really don't have to break it up into two groups. We can, instead of doing this, we'll replace it with these three lines. The first line determines which of those census, which of those records belongs to the Northeast and Midwest. That's a vertical bar, it means or. Um, then it stores all the uh, GSP per capita for the Northeast and Midwest in the MMT variable, MMT for measurement. Stores all this uh, census for ver values in the GRP. So when those three lines are run, the GRP should contain just Northeast and Midwest values. You know, it does. So that was the first change. Instead of having two groups, or two separate uh, uh, samples, we're going to put them all together because our null hypothesis is that the two groups are essentially the same. The next difference is instead of having those two sampling, you just have the one. Because under the null hypothesis, the group doesn't matter. So we're just going to sample from the group. The next part is just a slight rewriting of these two lines. And here we're going to be comparing the means. So it's means of the measurements when the group X is equal to the Northeast, when the group X is equal to the Midwest. So that was the second difference. And this line re uh, remains the same. You're looking at the X bar 1 minus X bar 2. And there's the distribution. distribution. This is the distribution of the test statistic, the difference in the means, under the null hypothesis. In other words, if the null hypothesis is true, if mu1 does equal mu2, this should be the distribution of our test statistic, the difference in the means. But here's the big question. What's the p-value? The p-value assuming the null hypothesis is true. Remember, p-values always assume that the null hypothesis is true. And here's how you would calculate it. First, you look to see what you observed. Second, you calculate the probability of observing data this extreme or more so. This TS is all the possible outcomes. OBS is what you actually observed. What did we actually observe for the test statistic? We observed a value of sample difference of 5,274. 5,274 is way over here. Probably right about there. So everything to the right of that 
is going to be part of the p-value. And everything that's more extreme on the bottom end is going to be a part of the p-value. Now, just to simplify calculations, we're just going to double this upper end to get our two-sided p-value. Two-sided because you're testing for equality. So how do we get this area? That's what this gives us. Everything that's highlighted are the times when the test statistic, what, you obs uh, what we just generated, is greater than or equal to what we observe. Taking the mean of that gives the right-hand tail. Taking the mean gives us everything shaded here to the right. And then doubling it gives us our actual p-value. So the p-value is 0 0.0274. We always compare the p-value to alpha. Usually alpha is 0 0.05. Because the p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. We conclude that this null hypothesis does not reflect reality. Mu1 is actually not equal to mu2. The difference in the means between the northwest, northeast and the midwest is not zero. Northeast actually has a higher mean than does the midwest. Another example. Instead of mu1 equals mu2, let's get, and yeah, we'll make it median 1. We're looking for a test of the difference in the medians between the two populations. What changes? Not too much. We still need to determine which values to include in the measurement and in the group. So these three lines stay the same. We still randomly select from the single group because our null hypothesis is that the grouping doesn't matter. X bar 1, we're going to call that median, and X bar 2 will also be a median, so that had to change. The meaning of X bar 1 and X bar 2 is, is now different. Test statistic keeps is still just the difference. There's the histogram. There's the distribution under the null hypothesis, that is, assuming that the medians are equal. This is the distribution of the difference in the medians. Again, assuming that the uh, groups are e that the medians are equal. This is a confidence interval for the for the difference. What we observed. Yeah, got to change those means to medians. What we observed in terms of the difference is 6382, which is outside this confidence interval. Since what we observed is outside of the confidence interval, we can reject our null hypothesis. Similarly, our p-value is 0 0.0098. Because p is less than alpha, 0 0.05, we also reject the null hypothesis. We have strong evidence that the median for the Northeast, GSP per capita in 2000, is not the same as the median in the, in the Midwest. p-value 0 0.0098. Notice that there is a very big difference in the structure of nonparametric bootstrapping when you care about the confidence interval for the difference versus you care about the p-value for the difference. This uh, video was for the p-value. And on the p-value, you always make the assumption that the null hypothesis is correct, that it's true. So under the assumption that the null hypothesis is true, then the grouping doesn't matter. We can randomly shuffle the group uh, membership. And that's what we do here. When we were looking at a confidence interval for the difference, we did not assume the null hypothesis was correct because we didn't have a null hypothesis. And here's what we, we had. We had the two groups separate. We shuffled within each group, not across each group, because we weren't sure that the grouping mattered or not. Measured the test statistic, got a confidence interval for that difference. So that's the big difference between confidence intervals with nonparametric bootstrap and p-values with the nonparametric bootstrap. p-value, you make the assumption that the null hypothesis is correct. 
because the p-value is the probability of observing data that's extreme or more so given that the null hypothesis is correct. So what's highlighted now is for the confidence interval. What's highlighted now is for the p-value. And the big difference is where you do the shuffling. For the p-value, you do it all together as one group. For the confidence interval, you do it in the two groups separately. Hopefully this was helpful. Practice on this. Take care.